have friends how are ya welcome back to my channel for a chatty hangout sip tea q a i love filming q a's because i feel like it's the most direct way to just sit down and have a conversation with y'all and talk about whatever you want to talk about and i haven't done one of these in a long time definitely since california maybe months ago and obviously a lot has changed since then so i was a little bit nervous to see what questions y'all submit but i'm very thankful to be here to be chatting i just made a chai tea my my building has this like tea coffee machine i don't know if you can see that steam can you see that steam i think it's going to be a few minutes till i can actually sip this i just want to make a couple disclaimers before getting into y'all's questions as i said i asked this on instagram if you don't follow me over on instagram um, I feel like that's just kind of the easiest way to interact with people. I'm probably more active on stories than I am anywhere and you know with polls and stickers and all that kind of stuff it just makes it really easy. So that's where I ask you to submit your questions and of course as probably to be expected I would say 90% of the questions have to do with divorce, separation, singleness, living on your own, breakups, more questions about what happened, that whole thing. And I kind of, I kind of expected that. But I tried to mix in, you know, every two to three questions, a non-separation related question, just to, you know, not have that be the topic of this whole Q&A. But I wanted to give that disclaimer up front in case you're here to hear that or you're really overhearing about that. And honestly, a lot of the time I'm like, I kind of feel bad about how often that comes up in my content. But I have to remind myself that I've been stepping a lot into vlogs lately and vlogging and sharing my life. And that is like a huge part of my life in that. I'm very much in that and in that transition. So I have to kind of talk myself out of this weird guilt and shame about it being so prevalent in my content right now because I'm like, Mikkel, if you wanna show up authentically, this is the biggest thing happening in your life. So it's okay to share it. I hope you know that my prayer every day for me and for my life is that God can use this for something good. And I've been overwhelmed with how many other people are in that process, just now finishing that process, or just now about to start that process that have found a lot of comfort just hearing someone else talk about going through it. So um, I have to remind myself that as well so that I don't feel so weird about sharing things, especially as I'm going through it and trying to figure out what I feel comfortable sharing when I'm in the midst of it. So those are my disclaimers. I wrote out questions and I wrote out the ones that were most recurring. Um, some questions I had like 30 people ask the same question, just phrased differently. So I tried to incorporate all of those in here as well. So those are all of my disclaimers. Let's get into it. These are in no particular order, and this is probably going to be a very long video, so I'm okay with that. But the first one is a very specific niche question, and it's asking, how is my friendship with Kaylees? If you're new here and you don't know this, my best friend in the entire world married to my ex-husband's best friend in the entire world. My ex-husband and her husband were roommates the whole time we were dating, so it was like the four of us, ride or die, do everything. So as you can imagine, in a separation or a divorce, that scenario gets very complicated. But um, Kaylise and I have gotten even closer during this time. She is funny because she's like my advocate when I'm too afraid to stand up for myself. And she's very much like, you know, she will call things out on my behalf and I love her for that. And so though I'm sure it's complicated for her husband, um, she has been so here for me and I adore her and our friendship has gotten even closer. She's actually visiting for me for my birthday in March and they have dreams of maybe one day moving to Texas as well, which would be huge. And when I think about that, I cry. I used to think about that and cry in a sad way and now I think about that and cry in a happy way now that I'm here. How do you deal with your ex having been your world and now not even a part of it? I think that there's some really beautiful things and some really difficult things about having someone be incredibly important to you and then no longer in your life. Of course, you miss that person and you miss that companionship. And when that person is removed, it's just a byproduct that so many other factors of your life will change. Like maybe one of you will have to find a different church or if you're like me, like one of you is going to move and that in turn has its own effect. So that's hard. But I think when you make someone such a priority and then they're gone, it's really freeing to find other things that you can now prioritize. So for me, that's myself, that's my faith, that's my hobbies, and that's my friendships. And it's been cool to have the, I don't know, if, we're, if we like put this into numbers, 20 hours a week that I spent with my ex, caring for him, being with him, all that kind of stuff, and then divide that, that's five hours a week to prioritize myself, five hours a week to prioritize my faith, five hours a week to prioritize hobbies, 
five hours a week to hang out with friends. Like look at all that new time that I now have amongst a lot of like grief and pain. It's been helpful for me to see it that way. Do you see a therapist? And if so, what are your main takeaways? So I was in therapy all of 2021, um, both individual therapy and couples therapy for the last part of 2021. Unfortunately, moving to Texas, I could only stay with my therapist 30 days after moving here before her license would no longer allow her to be my therapist. And since then I haven't found a new therapist, but the number one takeaway that she would always try to reinforce for me is to stand up for myself. And this came in a lot of different ways, whether it's something silly like when negotiating a contract, asking for my worth, or if it's something so much more serious like asking hard questions in my relationship. Basically not being afraid of confrontation and knowing my worth and knowing that sometimes to stand up for your worth it has to lead to some confrontational conversations. Not angry confrontational, doesn't have to be like that, but just like honest confrontational. And it's still something I suck at, if we're being honest. I'm not good at that, um, but I'm at least mindful of it now. And that's an area that I will continuously strive to improve. What are your tips and tricks to meeting and making plans with new people? I kind of talked about this in a vlog at the time of filming this, this vlog hasn't come out yet, but for me being receptive to conversation and just hanging out in public places, like my apartment has a dog park, something like that. Being open and receptive to conversation has led me to meet a ton of people. And for me, a way to make plans that for some reason doesn't feel as intimidating is there's a lot of walking trails in Austin. So I'll ask people if they want to like have a walking buddy ever, you know, if they have a dog, bring your dog. And the fact that you're moving and you're not just like sitting, having a eye contact conversation seems much less intimidating to me and it's fun. And you're seeing beautiful sights and, you know, moving your body. And that's kind of been my like fallback plan. Every time I make plans with someone new, I'm like, let's take a walk sometimes. <laughs> A couple questions I'm going to combine into one. One says, would you use dating apps again? And another says, would you consider going on a date? And let me first answer, would you consider going on a date? I am not actively looking to date anybody right now. And I don't think it's right for me to date until the divorce is finalized. If I organically met someone and they asked me to coffee, I would probably say, yeah, a, a low stakes date I think could be fun to step outside my comfort zone and just like practice having conversations one-on-one -on -one with a guy again but I'm not actively looking for that and I don't think I will actively look for that for I would guess a year it's hard to know but in terms of dating apps in case you missed it that is how I met my ex-husband was on a Christian dating app and I did not have good experiences on dating apps I have found that I am much more attracted to how people carry themselves and their mannerisms than the way they look in a picture or the way that they text or you know like a bio about them um, I'm just mostly attracted to that so that's not something you can gauge online so a lot of times I'd show up to a date from a dating app and within the first 10 seconds be like nope not interested but then you have to like go through the whole date so i found that frustrating so i don't think anywhere in the near future i would download dating apps but you know maybe if it's been a really long time and i'm just not meeting anybody as a way to like push myself outside of my comfort zone i would maybe try it again but i'm not really eager to do that in this moment or anywhere in the near future what has been the most healing thing you've done for yourself at this time? I'm actually really proud of this mental shift that I've been going through. Taking a lot of pressure off of myself has been incredibly healing. I was always the person that wanted to be way ahead on her goals, wanted to be pursuing like all different side hustles at once to like, you know, grow different areas of my potential career and have income diversification. And lately, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've let go of all side projects. Like the podcast, which actually there's a lot of questions about the podcast, and I haven't posted anything on the blog, and no sort of like collabs or um, product releases or side companies or anything. Like I just, I'm gonna take a year and not do anything. And that's been really healing for me to not feel like I have to find my value in what I'm accomplishing. But instead just be free to do what I need to do to pay my bills and to like stay on top of my primary job. Appreciate myself for myself and not for my to-do list. That's been healing. Best ways to support someone going through a breakup slash divorce. I will answer this from my experience, but I'm assuming this could be highly different depending on people's personalities and love languages and just like the emotional state that they're in due to the breakup or divorce. But for me, 
I didn't want to be alone, but I didn't want to have plans. Does that make sense? Especially like when things were really, really difficult and emotionally draining. So I think the best way someone could have supported me was just to be like, hey, can I come over and watch Netflix with you? Because it's low effort, but you could just like sit near someone. Because when you're married or maybe if you're living with your significant other and you're now on your own, it feels very odd to go from having someone always there to having nobody there. So that that was something that I was mindful of. Um, and you know, be okay if they're like, no, I just need alone time or space because I've heard a lot of people say that they need that as well. Thoughts on kids. I decided to have kids alone after ending a relationship. Would you do that? Very interesting. Yeah, I would consider that for sure. I've always wanted to have kids in my early 30s. Don't know if that plan will change, but that's kind of always what I've envisioned for myself. That's when my parents had my sister and I, and I feel like it's, it just feels kind of right for me and for like how I see my life going. So if I'm very single and in my mid 30s, I would definitely consider having a kid on my own, whether that's adopting or something very sciencey. I consider it for sure. How do you deal with betrayal? I'm struggling and you've handled everything with such grace. I don't know. Feeling betrayed is probably one of the most hurtful feelings that you could feel, especially if it's someone that you cared about so deeply and that you trusted your full heart to. I don't really have good advice except for saying that it is hard and I am sorry and I might seem like I handle things with grace, but I, I have moments where I'm just like very bitter about it or hurt by it or in denial by it maybe. So I don't have good advice except for that you're not alone and I understand how much that hurts and I'm so sorry. Um, have your opinions on getting married young changed during the season of your life? You know what's interesting is I've asked myself this question a lot. Uh, you guys might know my sister's 21 and engaged and my parents were 21 engaged. I was 21 and engaged. So there's a lot of recurring things there. Clearly my parents have a great marriage. Um, I'm very hopeful for my sister and her fiance. They're lovely people. Um, I don't think that my wants and desires have changed since being 21, but I think what I would tolerate has changed since being 21 if that makes sense. And I think I would have been pickier had I waited to get married. So I think, how do I say this in a way that is appropriate to say, assuming my ex was the same person that I married, things would have been fine. And I was the young one. So I don't think that I changed a lot. Had I waited, I would have looked for different signs, potentially maybe even red flags. Yeah. This is probably the most asked question and it's will, will there come a time when you share the reason for your divorce? I feel like I've been slowly opening up. I don't know if you guys have kind of picked up on that, but like as I feel more confident in something, I feel more okay sharing it because I feel like it's a lesson that I have solidified in my mind and I'm able to articulate. But I don't feel like I can share the full story at least until all the legal things are done because that just sounds kind of like risky and messy. And I'm still learning a lot of the real reason why. I think that there's some other questions later that I will elaborate on, but yeah, I'm just kind of slowly as I feel comfortable sharing it and maybe one day I'll put it all in one sit down video, but I'm not there yet. What do you miss most about California? I miss my church and that community. I miss the mountains and the beach. I miss the weather. The weather has been like this here in Texas and I'm like, gosh, I miss how predictable the weather was in California. Um, I miss a lot of the food and that's pretty much it. There's a lot I don't miss, like the traffic and the prices and just, you know, all the cliche things, but there's a lot I do miss too. Okay. This is another one of the most asked questions phrased in different ways. I wrote down two of the phrasings, but one person said, how do you feel about having old content of you and your ex that people can like pick apart and psychoanalyze? And then another person said, why have you left up your old videos and podcasts, etc." cetera? Let me first answer why I've left things up. So I have taken down some Instagrams, mostly only the more recent things. So that if someone just like glances at my profile for 10, 15 seconds, it's not like, oh, she's married, you know? And I think I deleted some Instagrams because Instagram really can feel like a highlight reel. It's like the best moments of our relationship. So it looks very lovey-dovey and it just, if people were to come to conclusions and assumptions based on only seeing my Instagram, it probably would not be correct. And I don't post very often on my feed. So like up at the top, there was still a lot of pictures with him. Videos and podcasts are different. Videos, um, if a video was sponsored, 
there is literally a clause in pretty much every single contract that that video has to be left up for X amount of years. The number of years can change, but it's usually years. Um, so those legally cannot be taken down. And I'm not trying to hide the fact that I was married. It's a huge part of my life. And those videos have a lot of like personal achievements and moments that I want to remember as well. So I don't feel weird having them up right now. Now, if I were to be in another relationship in the future, would I feel weird that that like my partner could go back and watch my marriage? Yeah, that I might feel differently then. But podcasts, you know, what's funny is I have not made a penny off that podcast. So it's not like I'm like, oh, I don't want to delete my podcast because I might lose revenue that the podcast doesn't make any money. The podcast was a lot of work. So maybe that's part of the reason why I've left it up. And I haven't even checked to see if listens or downloads have increased. But I think honestly, part of the reason why to start to get into the second variation of this question is the podcast was one of the most accurate representations to our relationship and how we communicated. And I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's been a lot more analyzing done that I haven't seen, but from the little bit of analyzing that people have done that I have seen, that's not a full sentence, you know what I'm trying to say. It's actually been very healing for me to see people kind of break down our dynamic and analyze it because this is a lot of things that I've done in my own mind and kind of wondered what is accurate and what is not. So to hear people on the outside come to similar conclusions as me makes me feel much more validated and it lets me take the lessons from this relationship, solidify it, and hopefully hold on to it for future relationships so I know what to look for and what to not look for. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, another one. And thankfully the next one is a little bit of a break things up question, but this one has been Another one that was very recurring. It says, have you and your ex been in touch at all? Are you on good or bad terms? Other people ask if we're just communicating through lawyers. We are in touch a little bit. I feel like I'm revealing a lot right now, but just to give a little bit of a backstory, um, the first few weeks of the separation, we were in touch a lot, like a lot, like wanting to see Max and all this kind of stuff. And like my goals and my intentions were genuinely to remain friends. And I also think it's hard to just transition from like living with a person to just not talking with them cold turkey. Maybe that's just me. As more information came out and as I learned more about the full situation, I became more and more hurt. So I actually, I implemented a boundary, which is a huge step for me because I'm usually not very good at doing that and had to tell him like, hey, my true goal and intention was to like be friends because um, you're a huge part of my life. But I don't think with what I've learned that's gonna be possible. So I think we just need to communicate about essential things only from here on out. And there's been a lot of essential things we have to communicate about. Um, like we're still trying to sell furniture and like split the profit of that. and all of this kind of stuff. So we have been in communication maybe like once to twice a week about essential things only. But I think it's actually been very, very healing for me to not have non-essential conversation. So that's been good. Thank goodness, a non-separation question. Is it still your goal to own or buy a house? Um, that was a huge goal of mine and something I always dreamed about. But it's so funny how with life changing so much, my goals don't feel as heavy right now. I think I've kind of realized that it's okay to go with the flow. And yes, I'd love to own a house, but it's not like a two year, four year goal for me anymore. Plus, as I've kind of alluded to, like my financial situation has very much changed. Like the, the savings that I had built up to hopefully buy a house one day is just looks very different now. So that goal is probably pushed way in the future and the housing market is crazy in Austin right now. So I would probably not want to buy if it's like this. Might keep going up, but who knows? Might have a lull eventually. So yeah, eventually, but it's not like a primary goal to answer that question. And another good question. What's been your favorite restaurant you've tried in Austin? I would say probably my favorite one so far has been Suerte, S-U-E-R-T-E. -E. Um, my cousin's really good friend is actually the executive chef there. And they're very hard to get a reservation at. Like you have to book it weeks in advance, but it's very trendy, very cool. They grow and make all their own corn products in house. And they have like the most delicious blue corn tortillas. It was quite the experience. Highly recommend if you're looking for like a fancy date night of any sort. Is there a specific reason you feel like you needed to move out of California post breakup? Why Texas, etc. Um, if you've been around for the last 
year or so on my channel, it, I feel like it came up multiple times that I was ready to move back home to Texas and that my ex was like, no, California or nothing. And so that was like a big conflict I was having in my heart is I moved to California to pursue acting. And then honestly, truly just kind of got burned out from it after doing it for 14 years. And so since I was no longer pursuing that, had my own career, I just was kind of tired of California pricing and I missed my family. I miss my family a lot. All of my family lives in Texas, even extended family. So that is why Texas. And it was actually like a silver lining amongst something so tragic was I finally got to live where I had been craving to live for so long. So that was like a little treat to myself amongst a very painful transition. Things to look for that I'm looking forward to. Someone that's joyful. I really hope to find someone that's joyful because that's important to me. Um, loving, loves God, others oriented. Red flags. Honestly, if, not to say people can't change, if it has been known for them to be deceitful or dishonest in a previous relationship, I am not going to entertain that. It's just not worth the risk for me anymore. So that would be a red flag. That would be an absolute no-go for me. Oh shoot, I just said I was gonna rapid fire and this is like a pretty heavy hitting question that I wanted to touch on. Um, Cause this comes up from time to time and it's something that I feel is important. It says, how does your religion affect how you see LGBTQ individuals? I just want to say that I feel like as a Christian, my goal, I mean, and it says this in the Bible, my only goal is to show people love. To love your neighbor is literally like a core pillar of the Bible. And I have so many loved ones in the LGBTQ community. I don't see them any differently. And I know a lot of Christians and a lot of churches can be really bad about focusing on rights and wrongs instead of focusing on love. And if you've ever felt unloved by a Christian, they're not doing what I think is their primary task. And I'm so sorry for anyone that has made you feel hurt. If you're in that community by Christians, I think that churches and humans are highly flawed people. And I'm a highly flawed person, but at the end of the day, I love you. I'm so glad you're here if you're within that community. And I kind of sometimes try to work within church culture and in those communities to shift people's mindsets away from being so legalistic and towards just being more loving. And that's something I try to do in any church I'm a part of, in any like Christian group I'm a part of, is just preach love. Why Austin and not Bernie, my hometown? Bernie is very small. Just for example, last time I was in Bernie, I went to run to HEB real quick to buy some tampons and I ran into the lawyer who's filing our divorce. That's why not Bernie. <laughs> Austin is just, it's bigger. It's only an hour and a half away so I can still see people easily, but I have some of my own space so that I'm forced to like find some independence. and. Austin is more diverse and there's just a lot of great culture and food and art and it's very outdoorsy, lots of walking trails. I love Austin, so that's why. May I ask why you haven't filed for a divorce yet? Actually, at the time of filming this, I think that we'll finally be able to file this week. We're filing in Texas um, because several reasons. It's significantly less expensive and we have a lawyer from our small town that's able to help me do this and we could not find a lawyer in California slash the ones that we met with are like so much more money. So um, in order to file in Texas, I just have to be living here for a certain amount of time to be considered a resident before I can file, which I hope that answers your question. How do you stay positive on days that you feel down and how do you pull yourself out of a rut? I actually really have been challenging myself to not fall into a pattern of positivity because that's something I do as a coping mechanism is I don't want to think about the hard parts of things or the hurtful parts of things. I just want to think about silver linings and it's great, but it's not healthy if that's the only thing you think of. So I might not be the best person to answer this question because I'm actually trying to allow myself to feel and process more of the hard emotions and I'm allowing myself to feel down and to be in a rut because that's growth for me. Are you scared about your anniversary date? Honestly, yeah. Um, our, what would have been three year wedding anniversary is February 2nd, which is coming up very soon. I had a trip fully booked to Hawaii. Canceled it, obviously, it was for the two of us. And now I'm just trying to kind of figure out what I'm gonna do with that day. So I would love any suggestions. I'm probably gonna 
hang out with y'all in a vlog because it's so weird to say this, but I genuinely feel so much less lonely on the days I'm vlogging because I'm chatting with y'all all day. Um, and it encourages me to like get up and do something instead of just like sit on the couch and binge 12 hours of Netflix. So I'll take any suggestions of ideas you might have. I just want to kind of, I, I think I want to spend the day alone and with y'all um, and do something for myself. Does your ex want to reconcile? This is another question that was asked over and over and um, no. This is a question I asked him very early on into the separation and his answer was no, so. Are you still planning to get a bee tattoo? Thank God, a lighthearted question. Um, I'd love to get a bee tattoo. If y'all don't know, I wanna get a tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little bee right here. And I had an appointment to do that in LA with a guy that I followed on Instagram for forever. Had to cancel it because of the move. And I've been on the hunt for someone in Austin and the couple people that have a similar style say that they're no longer taking bookings. I might honestly book another appointment with a guy in LA and plan a whole trip around it. His name is Joey Hill. You should look up his Instagram. He's phenomenal. The daintiest, tiniest little tattoos you've ever seen. Is there a piece of advice you'd like to give to Mikel five years ago? Yes, listen to your gut instincts. They're probably right. And don't settle. Tips on living alone. I actually wanna do a whole sit down video of things I've learned living alone, best parts, worst parts of living alone, something along those lines. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you. But my biggest tip to living alone is I have music playing 24 seven. <laughs> If I'm not filming or watching TV, music is playing and it just feels much less lonely in a sense. Will you get back into podcasting? Eventually, once I feel settled and once I feel healthy again, I actually would love to get back into podcasting. And my friend Michelle, Michelle Reed, commented on a video saying I should do a podcast with my parents. And I actually think that could be so much fun. Like maybe if I go to them and like we batch record like a full month's worth, I think that that could be very doable and just fun. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. How did you know it was the right decision to separate? Please don't answer if not comfortable. <sighs> this is a hard one to rapid fire on. Um, I think I had a turning point where in our couples therapy, we had, we had a Christian therapist who at the beginning of this was like, I just want you to know that like, I am biased. I am on the side of marriage. And so I will do anything I can to make your marriage work. And I will never tell you guys that you should separate. And we got into a session a couple months into it. And like, I felt our counselor break. Like he kind of shut down, like he didn't know the right thing to say. And for me, I was like, I feel like this guy doesn't know how to fix this. Um, which was like eye opening for me. But the final decision or like the when I was like okay this is the right thing was when some information came out slash when we had the conversation of do you want to make this work and the response I received was I don't see the point and that's when I was like both people have to try to want to make this work for this to work so if that's the attitude then like I I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down you know like I, I see what you're trying to say here heard understood you know what is your favorite Merit product? I love Merit's mascara probably more than anything. I love all their stuff, except for I still haven't gotten into their concealer stick or their foundation stick. Um, people swear by it, but maybe it's because my skin's been dry and it's very dry. Do you recommend couples therapy? Yeah, even though ours clearly didn't end well, it facilitated a lot of really necessary conversation. And it's nice to know there's a time and a place to have hard conversations so that you don't have to feel like you're the one constantly bringing up difficult topics that are important. So when you have like a third party person bring it up and like, you know, like, oh, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. That's our time to like have the hard hitting questions. It's good. Also, I think it's easier to feel more confident saying things when a third person's in the room, it feels safer. This last question is a weird one. Parents, if you have kids watching, this is an intimacy question. So just fair warning. This says, how do you feel about intimacy in a long-term relationship outside of a marriage post-divorce? And I thought that this was interesting because I kind of had this conversation with my mom the other day. Like, it's going to be very weird to date as a divorced woman. Like, it's clear that, like, I had an intimate partner now. And, like, that's, like, public knowledge in a sense, which is weird. It's not something that people have to, like, guess or assume about. I feel like I know the Christian response is, like, not to be intimate like that outside of a marriage in general. But it's, like, society's expectations feel like there's such clear societal expectations before marriage when you've never been married before 
but that doesn't seem to be there, like have that pressure as a divorced person dating. So I'm not like answering this question. It just feels weird, but it's just funny that I had this conversation with my mom that it's like, this is a really weird area of potentially dating that I never thought about. Like the fact that like it's public knowledge that I've been intimate and now I'm dating. So what is this? I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? It's very weird. This was a very, very, <laughs> very long video. So we had some hard hitting, difficult questions that I probably answered very terribly because this is one of my like thought through, you know, little heart to heart chats. This is me just blabbering my way through the, um, the fast balls you threw my way. And I didn't answer a lot of the really, really personal ones. Cause like I said, I'm just opening up as I feel comfortable in my own time. But hopefully something I said would help someone in the world, even if it's just for them to feel less alone. That's been my goal with all of my videos lately. And honestly, my only goal in life right now, it's, it's funny that my goals are no longer to like, like have good numbers or make money. My goals are literally to survive, to connect with people and to hopefully help someone else by being open, even when being open can sometimes lead to more criticisms. Yeah, I love you. Thank you for being here. My tea's finally drinking temperature. What, like 45 minutes later? I hope you have the best rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye. So give me a sign, give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign, baby, give me a sign. Just give me one more. Talking to you, here we go again Staying up all night to see if you've been texting me Where do we go from here? I wanna go all